And from here, we are going to send it to Shelby Nelson in the Cajon Pass. Yes, Vera, and you know what? Out here in Phelan, we're in the Cajon Pass. I don't see any clouds in this area either. Very hot at last check. You know, I've been keeping a close eye on the temperatures. It was about 98 degrees a few hours ago when we went live at four. It's been diminishing by about two degrees each time. So right now, 94 degrees, and it only will get better, hopefully, as the sun goes down later. But I don't want to complain because we are not in the desert where we are seeing excruciating temperatures over there too. I am going to eat a lot of popsicles. I usually just pour, pour a bottle of water over my head. Or... It might not be the conventional way to cool down, but as long as it works, because it is one sizzling scorcher out there with much of the western United States enduring a record-breaking heat wave. I'm not looking forward to the heat, and I can't wait till things cool down. But chances of that are slim, at least for now. The unrelenting heat wave bearing down with much of the inland areas, including the Inland Empire, bearing the brunt of it. Places like San Bernardino, Riverside, and Ontario will likely hit triple digits. We caught up with this woman headed to San Diego from Utah. She had a stop in Las Vegas with heat not even the morning hours could remedy. It's crazy. I've been trying to get across this desert before it gets too hot. There's no comparison when it comes to our deserts. In Las Vegas, forecaster Chris Outler says they have the potential to surpass their all-time high of 117 degrees, which has been recorded five times. But there's a chance we could even reach 118. Then there's the dreaded Death Valley, which could hit 130 degrees from Sunday to Tuesday. Its hottest recorded temperature to date, a whopping 134 degrees, more than a century ago. A According to the state's climate adaptation strategy, annual temperature increases over most of California have exceeded one degree Fahrenheit due to climate change, and it's only going to get worse. So often we talk about weather conditions leading to wildfires, but what about wildfires leading to a warming climate? I found that the fires that are happening here in California, uh, specifically the really big ones that we had uh, in the past uh, 10 years or so, those fires emit a lot of smoke. And the smoke has these particles called black carbon in them. Uh, and this black carbon uh, actually traps sunlight. James Gomez, a lecturer specializing in wildfires and climate change at UC Riverside, says even though this process is different compared to greenhouse gases, it can locally heat the atmosphere. Which can lower uh, relative humidity, which, would, which can actually decrease clouds and even potentially uh, suppress precipitation. Gomez analyzed peak fire days and emissions over the past 20 years, much of the larger fires breaking out in Northern California, which he says contributed to warmer temps by about one degree Celsius in those areas. And Gomez's study has been published in the Journal of Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics. It's important to note also that that warming happened on those immediate days when the fires were burning. That's the very latest from the Cajon Pass. I'm Shelby Nelson, sending it back to you in the studio. Shelby, thank you. Get